Today I would like to talk about how to handle units and specifically addressing the pound mass and pound force challenge. Question. On earth, how much does one pound mass weigh? This is a question I ask uh, often to uh, new students and is very seldom do I get uh, the answer I expect. Let's go back and look at the basics. If we have some symbolic units, uh, we would have F uh, would be our force, M would be our mass, L is our length, T is time. According to Newton's second law, these units are related by F equals M times L divided by T squared. In the U.S., uh, it's customary that we use the foot-pound-second system. In that system, the unit of force is pound force, the unit of length is foot, the unit of time is second, and by Newton's relation, this means that mass is really a derived unit. One such unit of mass in the FPS system is a slug. It's established by the relation one pound force equals one slug times one foot per second squared. In other words, one pound force is equal to a mass of one slug accelerated at one foot per second squared. This is really not a popular unit of measure for mass. In light of that, there is the pound mass. It's established by the relation one pound force equals one pound mass times 32.2 feet per second squared. In other words, one pound force is the force you get from accelerating a pound mass at 32.2 feet per second squared. Since one pound force equals one pound mass times 32 feet per second squared, what can, one can take this equation and divide both sides by one pound force and you would get one equals 32.2 pound mass feet per pound force second squared. This is one. Some folks call this one the unity conversion factor G sub C because it is used so frequently. This is one. This is unity. G sub C equals one. This is not gravity. Let's do an example. Drag force on a vehicle. You know that drag force is equal to one half times the coefficient of drag times density of, of air times the cross-sectional area projected of the vehicle times velocity squared. Let's take some numbers. Typical numbers, uh, we may have a coefficient of drag of uh, 0.25 and here I've used density of dry air at standard temperature and pressure given in pound mass per cubic feet. I've taken as an example the cross-sectional area of 36 square feet and I've taken as, as an example a vehicle going at 60 miles an hour which is the same as 88 feet per second. So you put those numbers into the drag force equation and we can certainly in our calculator calculate one half times 0.25 etc. So we can take care of the numbers but focusing on the units, focusing on the feet, we have a feet squared here, and then we have the 88 feet per second squared, so we'll have a feet, we'll have feet to the fourth in the numerator, and we'll have feet cubed in the denominator when that leaves a, a foot in the numerator and a second squared in the denominator. As we see here, carrying through the calculation and canceling the units, we end up getting 2610 pound mass feet per second squared. Say what? This is a strange uh, unit of force, no doubt. So this is where the G sub C comes to the rescue. So without changing the value, we multiply by 1. We multiply the 2610 pound mass feet per second squared by 1. Specifically, we multiply by 1 equals 1 over G sub C. Substituting And we start to cancel some units in our relation. We just cancel the pound mass. 
We cancel the fee, treating the units just like as though they were variables. Then we cancel the second squared. That leaves us with pound force as the only unit left. And then we just carry out the 2610 divided by 32.2. We end up with, voila, 81 pound force. Now looking at the power drag here, let's look at the power dissipated uh, due to drag. So we take the drag force and multiply by the vehicle velocity. We have 81 times 88, and that will give us 71.32. And our, then we have for units, we'd have uh, pound force feet per second. This is not a popular unit for power. So let's think about converting to horsepower. We know that one horsepower equals 550 pound force feet per second. Divide both sides by 550 pound force feet per second, we would get one equals one horsepower second divided by 550 pound force feet. Now, to get power dissipated due to drag, we want to multiply by one, so we're not changing the value of it. We put in that conversion constant that we just derived. We start canceling units, cancel the pound force, cancel the feet, cancel the second, and voila, 7, 7132 divided by 550 is about 13 horsepower. So that gives us a feel for what the drag power is in that scenario. Question, returning to my question, on Earth, how much does one pound mass weigh? Weight on Earth is equal to mass times gravity, g. We're on Earth, the acceleration due to gravity is 32.2 feet per second squared. So on Earth, a mass of one pound mass would then weigh one pound mass times 32.2 feet per second squared. Say what? We need to again convert, we need to convert to a unit of force like pound force by multiplying by unity which means in this case dividing uh, by g sub c again simplifying canceling units pound mass feet second squared leaving only pound force as the unit so it equals one pound force question on earth how much does one pound mass weigh answer one pound force some amusing quips from others. When I ask the question, how much does one pound mass weigh on Earth? I've got the question, do you want the answer in Newtons? Well, I guess any unit of force would do, but if you really understood pound mass, you wouldn't be asking that question. Another one I get is, uh, this is exactly why I use SI units. Well, in practice, SI units actually possess a similar issue because you may have one mass, a kilogram, a kilogram mass, yet you have two different units of force. There's a kilogram force and there's a newton. When you go to the doctor, your weight, you could be weighed in kilogram. So this would be a kilogram force. In summary, be diligent when handling units, especially when you encounter pound mass and pound force. Cancel the units as though they are var variables. Strategically multiply by unity, or one, in such a way as to, to get the desired units without changing the value at hand. And that concludes our discussion for the day.